Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an episode from the Thai mystery thriller anthology series, Girl From Nowhere, called Liberation. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Pantana Wittaya School from Bangkok is notorious for being the strictest school in the country. It is rumored that even the most notorious of students are straightened out by the time they graduate from here. In total, the school has 427 rules that have to be followed on a regular basis. These rules are so vast that an entire book has been dedicated to them. Anyone found disobeying them, even if it's by mistake, is sentenced to harsh punishment like isolation, bodily harm, and even death. Because of this, the students all always live in fear. They have no opinions, look lifeless, and act like puppets. On the other hand, the teachers are heartless and cruel. All they want to do is hurt the students. Hence, the school has lost its charm, and everything appears in black and white. Bringing anything colorful inside the premises is an offense, except the principal, who for some reason wears a bright pink suit. At the start of the show, a new student named Nano arrives at Pantano Wataya School. She is a cheerful girl who likes to have fun, but as soon as she enters through the gate, everything around her turns black and white. After she reaches class, a teacher asks her to introduce herself. Nano complies and greets her new friends, but they just reply with a vague smile. Soon, the class begins, and Nano gets seated near a shy-looking girl. She tries to initiate a conversation, but to no avail. Later, as she is unpacking her stuff, Nano accidentally drops her lipstick, which is dark red in color. This pierces through the black and white environment, and all of her classmates notice it. Fortunately, the teacher is distracted, and before she can catch wind of it, the shy-looking girl picks it up. Nano thanks her and quickly hides it inside her bag. However, just a few moments later, the discipline in charge of the school, Lisa, shows up with her minions. She is revealed to be the cruelest teacher around. Some students are so terrified of her on sight that they immediately wet their pants. That's not pee. Today, Lisa has come to conduct a random bag search. When it's Nano's turn, she tries her best to explain that going through others' personal belongings is an invasion of privacy. However, Lisa forcefully snatches her bag and goes through it. The entire class holds their breath, expecting the lipstick to be found any time now. But to their surprise, it's not there. The clever Nano has somehow concealed it somewhere else, and everyone called me crazy for putting things up my butt. She smirks menacingly as Lisa departs with her minions. Shortly after, Nano starts showing her true self. She is actually a rebel whose sole purpose is to change the customs and rules of Pantana Wataya school. She doesn't care about studying or making friends. All she wants is to punish the teachers and make them pay for their crimes. For the first step, she brings out her lipstick and puts it on in front of the entire class. Everyone is stunned to see a rule being defied like this. In the next scene, Nano is with the shy girl at the cafeteria. The latter has finally started opening up, but nonetheless, she advises Nano to be careful with her antics. She gives examples of two students who were sent to the scary repentance room for breaking the rules. It has already been three days, but the students are yet to be released. Surprisingly, even after hearing this, Nano is not bothered even in the slightest. Instead, she starts laughing like a maniac. This catches the attention of Lisa, who also happens to be around. When she also notices Nano's colored lips, she immediately wipes it off and takes away her lipstick. As a form of punishment, Nano is ordered to memorize all of the 427 rules from the book while standing in the scorching heat. However, our rebel girl is not going to be intimidated so easily. As the minions look on, Nano starts laughing at each and every rule inside the book. This draws the attention of several students and even some teachers. Lisa Lisa also arrives and right in front of her eyes, Nano brings out a lighter and burns the book down. Everyone calls her crazy, but Nano simply says, there's no rule that says you can't burn the book. Regardless, she is dragged to the repentance room, where two speakers are constantly blasting the 437 rules. This is enough to make anyone go insane, but Nano seems to be undeterred. She yawns and laughs like it's a normal day for her. The following day, Nano is already back in her class. This time, she is wearing a a bright green ribbon as a sign of defiance. The classmates are shocked to see her back so early, and Nano reveals that she has memorized all of the rules. She also asserts that the repentance room was not so scary after all. In fact, if all the students broke the rules, they could have a big party there. The conversation slowly starts to interest her classmates, but just then, Lisa arrives. Even she is shocked to see Nano out, as she doesn't remember releasing her. Lisa warns the girl to abide by the rules, but the latter bluntly says, this school 
school sucks. Having had enough, Lisa once again takes Nano to the repentance room, but this time for an even more severe punishment. Once they arrive, Lisa flashes extremely powerful lights into the poor girl's eyes and makes her utter the 427 rules. This goes on for the entire day. Back in the evening, Nano is once again back to her classroom. This time, she has dyed her hair completely purple. All the other students also appear to be on her side now. Slowly but steadily, Nano is succeeding in her mission that she came here for. As expected, Lisa takes her to the repentance room again. There, she asks Nano what she wants. The purple-haired girl laughs for a while and then asserts that she wants the entire system to be changed. All the rules that have been constricting the students of their freedom have to be abolished. Hearing all of this, Lisa loses her cool. As the the ultimate punishment, she pulls out Nano's tongue with a plier. However, despite the immense pain, Nano can't stop laughing. Later, as Lisa is in her office, reminiscing about her day, a new student named Yuri approaches her. She introduces herself and reveals that she knows Nano very well, as they both studied in the same school previously. Yuri then requests to be made the head inspector, as she is the only one who can help keep Nano under check. Lisa doesn't believe her, so Yuri brings out her phone and shows a group chat of all the students who are planning an uprising. She reveals that she used a fake identity to track what the students are up to. Impressed, Lisa finally agrees to make Yuri the head inspector of the school. In the next scene, all the rebellious students from the group chat are punished. They are made to kneel down the whole night. As the days pass by, Yuri starts winning over Lisa's trust and gains access to her office. One day, she sneaks inside the office and goes through some confidential documents. It's clear that Yuri is also up to something. Elsewhere, Nano is once again back to her class. She can even speak, despite having her tongue taken out a few days ago. When she reaches her desk, she finds an envelope waiting for her. It is wrapped in a red ribbon with the words Top Secret written on it. Nano just smiles as she excitedly opens the envelope. The scene then cuts to a few hours later, where Nano is heading somewhere with a bunch of posters. On the way, she comes across her old nemesis, Yuri, who is wearing a similar ribbon to the one that she has wrapped around the envelope. This reveals that she was the sender. Nano appears to be in a hurry, so she simply tells Yuri to get out of her way before leaving. After a while, she reaches the top floor and prepares to paste a few posters there. But right then, Lisa arrives at the scene and stops her. She inquires what's in those posters, and Nano, with a smirk on her face, explains that it has all the information about the school's corruption. Every year, the government and several other organizations donate millions of dollars to the school, hoping they can improve their facilities. However, not even 5% of those funds are even used. The school continues to be as dirty as ever. The rooms are dilapidated and the food tastes like garbage. It is evident that all the teachers are keeping the money for themselves. Hearing all this, Lisa loses her cool and attempts to snatch away the posters. Nano doesn't let go, and hence, the two get into a minor tussle. Surprisingly, Yuri is recording all of this from a corner. After a while, she approaches the two and suddenly pushes Nano down from the balcony, killing her instantly. The entire school is traumatized by the manner in which Nano has been killed. Meanwhile, Yuri throws all the posters down and and lets the students know about how corrupt their teachers actually are. But she also sends the video she recorded earlier to the group chat, hence making it seem as if Lisa was responsible for Nano's death. The plan works, and as soon as the students go through the video and the posters, they become enraged. In a matter of seconds, they turn into animals and start chasing after all the teachers of Pantano Wataya School. Lisa is also caught, and just like the other teachers, she is bound and beat up. Later, all the teachers are brought to the main hall. Yuri, who is now acting as the voice of the students, steps forward and announces that the rules will change. For years, the students have been suppressed and tormented, but now it will be the other way around. The teachers will have to play by their rules, and if someone does not obey, they will be punished inside the repentance room. Saying this, she tells all the teachers to write down their confessions on a piece of paper. While most of them oblige, the evil Lisa merely laughs and refuses to write anything down. This enrages some of the students, so she puts her in a chokehold to teach her a lesson. Unfortunately, in the heat of the moment, he doesn't realize that Lisa has actually stopped breathing. After all the students find out that the boy has killed their teacher, they suddenly turn on him. Some say that he should be sent to the repentance room, while others demand his execution. Fortunately, the principal arrives in the nick of time with a gun in his hand. He threatens everyone to stand down and then frees the captive teachers. Following this, the principal gives the students a choice. If they confess to their crimes and promise to never be disobedient, obedient again, he will forgive their mistakes, even the murder of Lisa. As soon as he says this, many cowardly students start pleading forgiveness, but some of them remain silent. One of them 
is Yuri. After a while, the principal gathers these rebellious students at one place to punish them. At first, he summons Yuri, as she was the one who initiated all of this. He then brings out a sharp knife and prepares to execute her. But right then, surprisingly, a bloodied Nano appears. She has miraculously come back from the dead. Then, three other versions of her show up too. One has her tongue cut out, one is wearing a green ribbon, and the final one is the Nano who had just arrived at the school. It turns out that every time Nano is punished, a new version of her replaced her older self. This explains why she was always back in her class, despite being locked inside the repentance room. The four Nanos immediately lock all the doors, trapping the terrorized teachers. Then, the version of Nano who had just died recently confronts the principal and threatens him to put the gun down. The latter says no and prepares to pull the trigger on her. But right then, all the students bring out their most lethal weapons, their smartphones. They go live and record their evil principal, who is ready to kill his students in the name of discipline. This finally scares the big fat principal and he drops the gun. As soon as he does so, the students swarm him and take him down. Taking advantage of the commotion, the cunning Yuri tries to get away, but Nano stops her. In this way, the entire administration of Pantana Wataya School is brought to their knees. Now, the students don't have to live in the fear of being punished. They can be carefree and mischievous, like normal high school students should. In the last scene, Nano locks her nemesis Yuri in the repentance room, along with all the teachers. Then, with with her objective now completed, she departs the school forever. I guess we're just never going to answer the whole clone thing. What happened? Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.